So now we're going to move on to purchasing or accounts payable within Business Central. And to start this off, we're going to navigate to vendors or suppliers. Now, vendor is the American term for suppliers. I'll just refer to them as suppliers from now on, just to, to make things a little bit easier. Um, the view that I've selected is list view. It makes it really easy to select the supplier that we want to scrutinize um, and then see the, the relevant information. So clicking on first up consultants, I can see that I've got 1,600 quid's worth of invoice outstanding. So it's good to be able to pull out that detail quite quickly, um, you know, and you can also have a, a complete history of what's gone on to date um, from that fat box as well. So it's really handy as a shortcut to make things a little bit quicker. But in this example, we're going to British Gas because I want to create an invoice for a utilities bill. Okay, so it show you some of the information on the supplier card, um, name and address, um, all the other stuff to do with VAT registration. You know, free to use it. Don't have to fill everything in. Depends on you know how much of the system you do or don't want to use. And then we've got posting details in line with my um, domestic posting setup, which if I go into that list just to show you, um, we can see that it's going to lodge um, this particular purchase transaction to these areas of my chart of accounts. Okay, so it's very easy to see where those are going, but I'll show you how to preview that posting in a second as well. Um, and then we've got payment terms, so it's going to count down according to my payment terms here. And then we've got payment method, which is always important to set because obviously you don't want to be paying for something by bank transfer that you've already paid for by direct debit. That would be a, a bit of a no-no. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new purchase invoice for a, a utilities bill. Now, this isn't really what you'd use a purchase invoice for. You know, you might as well just use a purchase journal and we'll move on to, to looking at that next. But obviously with invoices, you can select items that you may want to buy in. You can specify quantities and you can specify different types of line as well. So if we're assigning a charge. Um, but in this example, we're just going to use GL account. Um, I'm just going to search for utilities. So utilities expenses here. Um, I can update the description to say you know, September 2019. There we go. Quantity of one, direct cost 200 quid plus VAT. Okay. Now I've also added the VAT posting group to this um, invoice just so that it gives us the flexibility to change. So if I want to change that to reduce VAT, I can do. I'm going to leave it as standard, but that, that ability exists within the system if you do want to change it manually. Um, and again, as much as it's pulled through all of this information from the supplier record, I can change this if I want to on the invoice too. So just because something is set up in the supplier doesn't mean that it can't be changed thereafter. Okay. Now, all I need to do to post this cost, enter a document number, and then click on post. Now, before I do this, I'm going to preview posting just to show where this is going to end up in our chart of accounts. So we've got a vendor ledger entry, we've got a VAT entry, and then a detailed vendor ledger entry, which is basically a combination of our vendor and VAT entry there. Okay, so hyperlink will take us into where those are going so we can see for each of these elements exactly where they're likely to go. So it's good to preview if you're at all uncertain about where that's going to be posted. But I'm just going to go ahead and post this now. So we'll post the invoice. It's going to ask me whether I want to see it, and I don't, because I know it's just going to count down according to our payment terms. But if I now look to my balance with this hyperlink, I can see um, this invoice that we've just generated there. So that's the first way of posting a transaction. Now, what I can also do, again, going back to my homepage, if I'd not gone into vendors, I can go into journals and then purchase journals. Okay, very similar process. I'm just going to go into the, the default journal, and I'm going to say that we are creating an invoice. Um, it's generated a document number for me. Um, I can then enter the external document number, which again is going to be whatever the, the supplier is giving to us. Um, and then I can specify the supplier. So we're going to British Gas again, and then we can just specify that amount as we did before. Okay. Now, if we then want to specify where that's going in our chart of accounts, we enter the balance in account. And again, I'm just going to specify utilities there. Um, and it doesn't need to be any more complex than that. So again, we can process, or sorry, post. Post the journal lines, and then that's done. So again, going back to British Gas as a supplier, we should see that update their balance as well. So we can go in there, we can see now instead of 700, it's now 900. So we can see that coming through from the journal there as well. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, depends on your preference, really. Um, but as I say, thought it was worthwhile just taking you through the, the, both of those options in, in highlighting the purchase process there. Okay. Now, some other useful elements that you may want to keep track of. So if we are wanting to do any sort of aged reporting, we can go into aged accounts payable um, and we can start generating some information here. So here we can age as of the due date. Um, we can set a period length, which in this case is a month, um, and then we can preview that report. 
Okay. But what we might want to do is have an indication if we are working in multiple currencies of what invoice or what transaction has happened in what currency. Um, and then if we want to see all of the details behind what's going on with that particular, um, well, all the details behind what's going on with our suppliers, then instead of it summing all of the outstanding balances that we may have, it will print the individual details so that we can see by individual invoice. So if I go ahead and preview this, um, you'll be able to see what's going on here. Okay, so we've got quite an intricate report there that shows us exactly what's going on um, with each of our companies. Um, so yeah, really cool report. To order Dynamics 365 licenses or to sign up to a 30-day free trial, navigate to d365.link forward slash now.